And welcome back. Well, uh, you know, we've had a couple candidates on already. You know, the state primary is coming up very soon in uh, just about a month or so. And this is the time that we get some folks on who are uh, looking to run and uh, looking for your vote. And uh, today we have a gentleman on that is running for a state assembly for uh, this district, Mr. Keith Curry. Nice to meet you, sir. Thank you, Ken. Good to be here. Nice to have you. Tell me a little bit about yourself and your background. Well, I've been on the city council in Newport Beach now for eight years. I've served two terms as mayor. I'm president of the Association of Cities this last year. Uh, before I, uh, I, I did that, I was for 24 years a financial advisor to state and local governments. Oh, okay. I put together long-range financial plans and bond uh, financings. We grew that company from 67 people to 450 people and $100 million in revenues. Wow. Had a chance to sell the company and then retire. Now I teach at uh, Concordia University in the Graduate Business School. But I really go back a long way. I served with President Ronald Reagan in Washington at the Department of Transportation at the Federal Transit Administration. Uh, and then before that, I worked with Paul Gann to qualify the Gann uh, Spirit of 13 Spending Limitation Initiative back in 1979. All right, very good. Well, we know that um, you know, you're running for state assembly and uh, let's see, 74th district? 74th right? district, yes. And uh, let's talk a few things that are going on in the state. I think we all know um, the difficulties that we're right. having here. Uh, one of them that has been brought up and uh, time and time again is, of course, when it comes to uh, state, all government workers, whether right. they're state or local. Uh, and uh, we have what's called these legacy uh, pensions right. and uh, things like that. Um, what, is your, what is your take on this? I mean, on one hand, yes, we know it can be a tremendous burden, even to cities. We've mm -hmm. seen that with, yes. with Costa Mesa. On the other hand, there are people who have been working in, their, in these capacities mm -hmm. for years. And from the very start, they were promised, well, after certain so many years, you're going to be getting this pension and your health insurance will continue. It's different right. for each thing. Right. So how do you balance that to something that's both help us financially, but also fair for those who were promised? They're kind of sure. caught in the middle. In they are cases. caught in the middle. And you really hit it on the head, Ken, because what happened is back in 1999, the state legislature adopted the 3 at 50 formula, 3% of your salary times the number of years you work and you can retire at 50 years old. And what we found is that that just does not work as a matter of mathematics. Uh, and so what mm -hmm. we've done now is most cities uh, have closed off the 3 at 50 system. So we have a second and in some cases, like in our city, a third tier. So all new employees are going to be in a more sustainable and affordable pension system. Uh, and we have to ask our employees to pay more of their own cost of the pensions. Pension costs are doubling for most cities. In our city, our employees paid nothing in 2007. They're paying almost $8 million this year. Mm -hmm. So working with our employee groups, we're able to have them help us share in those costs. And that's really the key uh, to, uh, to addressing this issue for the existing legacy employees. We're not going to cut off anybody's pension. You can't do that really by law. Uh, who's uh, about to retire, who's recently retired. But you can ask them, just like private sector employees do, to pay more of their own pension costs uh, to offset that fee. And that's what responsible cities are doing. And frankly, most uh, enlightened labor organizations are coming along and being partners in doing that. Yeah, and that's what you need. You need, a, you, right. you need good partners there. So that's something you see that if you get into the assembly, that uh, you can kind of translate that local uh, way of doing things, uh, trying to translate to maybe on a state level. That's so exactly that right. What we okay. need Sacramento to do is to give the cities more options. We can only offer people off of the CalPERS menu uh, the kinds of systems that they have. Right. So if they give us the chance to offer those who want it a defined uh, a contribution system as opposed to defined benefit system, mm -hmm. uh, that will increase their take-home pay and reduce our ongoing pension costs. Mm -hmm. uh, if, we get, if we have the opportunity to give other options to our employees, uh, that would be uh, something that employees and uh, cities can work together at the bargaining table to do to find the right mix of an affordable and sustainable system on an ongoing basis. All right, very good. Um, you know, uh, we have seen just recently, uh, we, we've, we've heard about uh, many companies in some capacity leaving the state. Yeah. We just had a big one uh, a few weeks ago with uh, Toyota right. leaving, I believe, Torrance, 5,300 yes. workers for uh, somewhere in Texas. Um, again, this is, this is sort of a balance of, you, you know, you want to keep these companies here. You may have to uh, look at uh, some sort of uh, tax initiative for them right. as other states. Let's face it, California is competing with other states nowadays. 
many companies, it doesn't matter where they're located at anymore. That's right. It used to matter. That's right. Certainly, there's certain ones that have to be right. located here. But again, what's this balance? What's, what's, the, what's the answer to keep companies here? More some tax initiative for them or incentives or, or what? Well, Toyota follows Charles Schwab, who, Charles, who followed Occidental Petroleum, who followed the middle management of Chevron, our biggest employer in Northern California. Jobs by the thousands are leaving California, and they're leaving them because of overregulation, a bad a tort uh, a litigation environment, and high taxes. California has the highest income tax, the highest sales tax, the highest gas tax, and the highest energy costs of any state in the country. So we're very non-competitive when it comes to attracting new jobs. Jobs are what we need to grow the economy and sustain California uh, as the mm -hmm. kind of place that all of us grew up in and all of us remember. So what we need to do, uh, the, the first thing is to have the Proposition 30 tax increases roll off the income tax and sales tax, and then we've got to stop the split roll. That's taxing commercial property, taking away its Proposition 13 protections at a higher rate. Pepperdine University says if we do that, it would be a $6 billion tax increase that would send shopkeepers and store owners out of state and shutter our main streets. Uh, and it would cost us 360,000 more jobs. We can't afford that in California. So it's the right combination of reducing regulation, of making our litigation environment better, uh, and cutting taxes. Okay, so they, again, that a lot of people don't realize that um, Proposition 13, all those years ago, all covered commercial property it as did. well. And that's yeah. one of the things that's helped sustain our economy currently. While we have the highest income tax, sales tax, and gas tax, our property taxes are more moderate. Mm -hmm. And that enables people and businesses to continue to invest here, uh, and uh, it makes it disadvantageous for some of them to leave. But if we take that protection away, they most certainly will join the exodus out of state. Okay. Um, what about, you know, you, you cover the taxes and uh, a little bit there. What about just the, you, the things that you have done in the city of Newport? How would you uh, relate that to the state? Are there certain things that yes. uh, the city has handled that you feel could be done on a state level? I think uh, you mentioned one of them, how you need to, to work right. with the labor organizations. They're not going away. Right. Well, when I was mayor in 2010, right at the height of the recession, we introduced what we called the Fiscal Sustainability Plan. It was 15 points that fell within three categories. Live within your means, run government more efficiently, and support the underlying tax base. We did all three of those. Our assessed valuation went up every year during the recession. We had a surplus every year during the recession, and we put money into our reserves every year into the recession. That's the kind of leadership we need in Sacramento. We reduced our workforce by more than 100 employees. We contracted out service to private sector uh, providers, and as a result, we, we increased our services, but we cut our costs. We can do that in Sacramento as well. And we did it in partnership with our employee groups. Our firemen and our police officers and our public employees were partners in, in helping us achieve that. We can do that in Sacramento as well. Okay. If you get elected up there, uh, you're going to be, um, although it's not a super majority anymore, uh, as, at least as of today or as of the last uh, month, you will be working with primarily sure. Democrats. You are a Republican. Right. Uh, how do you... How do you feel that, uh, that you'll be able to, to work things out? I mean, it's, it can be a difficult environment. Well, it can be, but I think people, whether they're Democrats or Republicans, are fed up with the partisanship, and what they want their elected officials to do is to be able to work together for common solutions. Jobs help everybody. Better education helps everybody. Better transportation and infrastructure helps everybody. And I think we can find common grounds with our Democratic friends uh, to get solutions to those issues. Uh, we've got to work carefully at it, we've got to be diligent, we've got to be hard at the bargaining table, but our Democratic friends are hearing the same things from their constituents. People want jobs, people want better education, people want an economy that's growing again. Those are the kinds of things that we need to build a consensus around, working together, Democrats and Republicans, to get California moving again. All right, very good. Nice to have you on, sir. Keith Curry, running for 74th Assembly District. And uh, your website? Is it it's www.curryforassembly.com. Okay, very good. And uh, I appreciate you coming on. Thank, Thank you, you very much. All right, we'll be right back with Residence Voice. Thank you.